Now we shot a few deer out of our rednecks uh, last year. This location is a special spot because it actually applies for bow hunting too. A lot of times we're shooting uh, bucks out of our rednecks uh, with a gun. And you know, that's easy. We put the, the redneck 100 yards away from the field, 150, 50 you know, yards away from the edge. And last year I shot blade out of the, the redneck right back over here. And that was more like a 254 yard shot. Um, we shot some in, in um, Wisconsin this year. Diane shot herds at about 180 yards out of the redneck. And, and then last year she did the same. Last year I shot a muzzleloader buck. And so those are a little bit more easier setups because if you have the redneck, redneck located where you can get in and out without spooking deer that are on a food source or in an area that you're watching, pretty easy to set that up for gun where you can get in and out without spooking spooking deer but to me it's a special place when you can actually shoot deer box that you're targeting with a bow or a gun out of a redneck and a blind that you might be setting up and uh, you can see behind me right here how this redneck really looks like it's sticking out you know it's obviously sticking out from this side but this is the ag field side this is where deer are at after dark so when we're when we're out here it's just wide open you can see the snow right now it's even, it looks a lot more open. So the deer are hitting these ag fields after dark. And that's the beauty of a setup like this. Diane shot two, her two bucks in Minnesota on, on our new property this year out of this particular redneck. One of them we actually call the uh, the COVID buck because we were towards the end of COVID recovery in early November and it's gun season still. And I encouraged Diane just to sit for an hour. And I dropped her off way back there. She walked in you know, a 10 minute walk, 15 minute walk. And she was in the blind for, we she was only really literally planned to hunt for about an hour and 20 minutes. And uh, sure enough, she was in here for about seven minutes and Wally, one of the bucks that we were, we were after, happened to be right in her scope when she was adjusting the scope, standing in the exact same spot that she'd shot her bow buck. Again, going back to, this is a great setup for bow or gun. And I'd like you to take these kind of tips back to your own land and set up your blinds and try to be as careful as we are with this setup. Now, this setup right here, we talked a lot about um, how we were creating this food plot. It had never been planted before. It's a linear food plot. So it's encouraging the deer to travel left and front and right in front of the blind instead of right at the blind and out to the food. So we have an opening over there and an opening over there. And so what's nice is the deer exiting this food plot 50 to 100 yards away over that way and a couple different trails and 50 to 60 yards back this way as opposed to coming right under us smelling our access getting into our access now this food plot alone would be tough because if the deer were coming into here and they're sitting here till dark we'd have a hard time getting in or out some of the deer are going up into the ag but about 200 yards that way we have another food plot we have a small food plot so two other ones and then we have a big one that totals over two acres and that food plot runs for 300 yards so we have a lot going on that way and that matches up exactly with what we're doing here. So a lot of the deer come out, they travel to the right, travel to the left, and then they exit somewhere around dark. Now the food plot that we put in here, we didn't want it to be down to the dirt and offer nothing. So if we put brassica around here and it's only a quarter acre plot, I love the brassica blend we use from John Comp, uh, the Sweet Feast brassica blend, Northwoods Whitetail. Been using that for actually 10 or 11 years and like that blend, planted all the time, planted in Minnesota and Wisconsin. But if we put it on a small plot like this, it's likely that it's down to the dirt by October. If we put beans in here, they probably wouldn't even make it to September, maybe not even to August. So we need something that's reliable. We added peas, late planted beans, and then uh, oats. And then we top dress that with two to 300 pounds of winter rye about a month later. And when we put the rye out, that was early September to mid September, right around there. What's nice about the rye, the oats early initially, and even the heavy peas is it's all pretty browse resistant, especially the rye. So what we have in the spring here, it's going to pop up in rye. And that's something that actually stands the traffic and the grazing pressure that goes along with a small plot that is a high pass through and a highly desired uh, location. We have a, a mock scrape that we put right in front of the blind. And what's nice about that is, especially when there's a blind, but certainly when you're in a tree stand, when deer come into this location, and especially bucks, they're eyeing up that mock scrape. And so they're not no, they're not paying attention to you in the blind, they're not paying attention to you in even a tree stand. So you can get away with a lot more when you have a mock scrape. We have a mock scrape at almost every stand or blind location, and this is no exception. So for the fact that this runs perpendicular to our access to the blind, it's complemented by other food sources, eventually they get out to the ag here and that'd be no different if you weren't surrounded by ag maybe your neighbors have food plots that are pressured 
Maybe you have an open hardwoods where they like to browse after dark. Some open acorn stands where there's not a lot of cover, but that's where they go after dark. Maybe a clear cut that they're heading to on public land in the distance or on your neighbor's property. Doesn't have to be ag. It's just that they're feeding here during the daylight, they're passing through and they're getting somewhere else about dark and getting out of the property. That allows us to get in and out of the blind without spooking deer. So initially, as we showed a lot last year, we talked about this setup. This setup held a lot of promise. We enjoyed moving this redneck uh, from up on the ridge over here to this location. Like I said, it fit in perfectly. And we're gonna, we're gonna walk up in that red, right, redneck right now and take a look, uh, look at where Diane shot her bucks and why that works, how we cut out this tree. But as you can see right here, this you can see the red cedar we put this behind. A lot of people go in front of the cover and they're right on top of the food plot. We likely wouldn't have shot either of those bucks then because they would have been spooked off this plot until after dark. So we stuck that redneck behind that, that red cedar and that's why it sticks out to this side. We really don't, really don't care about this side. The deer aren't typically out here except for the dark hours. And we really needed to, be, to pay attention to this entire food plot strip that's running in front of it. And that's why all the covers on that front side. And we had to do some major cutting to get this to work. How about we climb in here and I'll show you those shoots, those shooting, uh, shooting angles and those shooting holes that we had and a little bit of the layout of the plot and why that worked and why we were able to get in and out of there without spooking deer. Now we're up here in our nice comfortable blind. We're blessed to use these in the first place, but we have a lot of cover that we actually put this behind. So we have major shots out here. We can almost shoot to the back of the blind, but it's 50, 60 yards. So we're not shooting to the back with a bow, but anything that comes through this little strip right here, we have a very wide lane where we can shoot deer. Now, cool thing is Diane's first bow buck ever with a bow and it's tough. I don't know if you guys have shot deer with a bow out of a blind, but paying attention to the windows and how much you can move and what you're doing in here, it's a little bit harder than it, than it sounds. It sounds like you just sit up here and shoot them, but it takes some planning to get the shot. So I was pretty impressed that she shot that buck right down there, that first one. Uh, Dylan had named him Iowa because it reminded him of an Iowa buck that uh, they were familiar with. But Diane shot Iowa right down there, standing under an apple tree, and it's about 28 yards. Dante was in here filming. And so that was the beauty of it. They could move actually around a little bit here. But because we put the blind behind the red cedar and we cut out a major hole right here and then a major hole right out there, then she was able to make that shot. And again, this food just travels left to right through here. Very thick cutting uh, bedding cover on the backside. The temptation for a lot of hunters is to go in on that bench right there and hunt those movements going back and forth. Now we were able to see the movement in there after Diane shot her deer and we went and tracked them. So that the movement in there is incredible, but we can't get in there without spooking deer because we have to come back out through here. So whether the food plot was here or not, there's too much cover for us to get all the way in there another 60 to 80 yards and hunt those lines. We leave them alone and we hunt them right up there on the hill and we can hunt them between the food plot here and the next food plot on the other side. So we're not always hunting on the food plot in this location. This blind worked because of this hole, because of this hole, in this cover and so when diane was here she opened this window and she was just looking where she shot her bow buck she was just trying to plan ahead you know maybe a shot will be here being a new hunter she was kind of like we'll just kind of see if if uh, history repeats itself and so she had her scope zoomed up to too high she's probably looking at something in the last location she sat and so she was adjusting her scope making sure it was on three power so when she looked down there with her shotgun Wally was standing literally right in her scope, already in that same location, so she flipped the safety off and shot him. She was able to get in and out without spooking him. He had to be close because, it, like I said, she shot him within seven minutes of her coming in here. And she had, I know, we know the timing because as soon as she got in here, she texted me and said, okay, what windows do I need to open and what would be best? And uh, I was already driving back to the house. I was still pretty tired out uh, from recovering. And, um, and so I was actually sitting in the couch about to take a nap. I looked at it and she'd already shot, shot the buck. So uh, it happened that fast. But again, left to right movement, easy in and out. We're using the cover, which is critical of this red cedar right here. And we'll go down and show you when we end, but we'll look back up here and you can kind of see, like we'll look back up from in front of this red cedar at the blind 
and then this hole and that hole and really it just blends in with the dark cover that's around here and it was a great setup i encourage you to really try these setups if you have evergreen if you have thick regeneration we're going to put some uh, another redneck this year behind uh, some box elder growth that will hinge cut and that will expect that growth to uh, shoot up at least six to eight feet this year it's crazy how fast and then you have that horizontal cover we'll be able to walk into that redneck behind that cover and not spook deer when we're getting in and out and we'll be able to get a, a look at not only the uh the food plot that's there but some of the surrounding movement as deer are coming in and out of that that food plot or even behind that food plot so let's go take a look down there we'll look back up here and you guys can see how it blends in you know and finally i wanted to come down here and if you look back there obviously we can see that redneck up there behind that red cedary notes there but you can tell it blends in completely and, uh, and obviously we have a hole on either side but those holes that redneck just fits within that hole of what we cut so great way to hide the blinds whether you're hiding your blind behind switchgrass hardwood regeneration conifers lay of the land a berm hillside it has to be hidden unfortunately people put that redneck right out here in the food plot spooks off the deer they can smell where you're going up and down the stand creates a uh, nocturnal situation and again we had high hopes for this location this food plot this string of food plots and habitat improvements back in the summertime when we purchased the land and we worked at it during the summer and boy it really paid off diane's first buck with a bow and then a great buck with her shotgun later in the year and we saw deer every time we sat here we probably only sat here eight to ten times we didn't over hunt or spook it but uh high percentage sit and we can't wait to hunt it uh this fall and i hope it helps you take some of these tips and again with your blind setups and even stand setups this year making sure you have great access you're looking at that movement left to right it's hidden access you can get in and out without spooking deer and if you can't reshape the plot don't plant the plot move the blind do something so that no matter what you do you can get in and out without spooking deer from your blind or tree stand this fall now as we transition into habitat season i hope you've had a chance to check out my web class how to design your web your whitetail parcel it's on my website whitetailhabitatsolutions.com i have a link in the description and i hope you can find it check it out and enjoy it this year